I think if I wasn't adopted, my life would have just gone down a completely different route. Both of our lives would have been completely different. Yeah. Because I think if we were still in that position, God knows where we would be now. Across the UK from March 2017, there are over 72,600 children in care. According to the NSPCC, there are now 94,000 looked after children. The amount of children entering the care system has risen by 2% compared to previous years. However, the number of looked after children who were adopted in 2017 decreased. The age of adoption can impact the, um, the child in, in quite a profound way, depending on the age of the child when, when they're adopted. Harry is 19 and currently working as an assistant manager in a bar in Bournemouth. Harry was placed into care due to neglect. Uh, my dad got into a lot of debt. He started doing drugs, smoking, he died of cancer and my mum dealt with that quite severely so she went out clubbing, did drugs and then look, didn't look after us. Harry was fostered for three years before finally being adopted. Despite their efforts, Harry and his sister were placed into 12 different foster homes throughout their time in care. I was adopted at four and I went into a care at one. There was six of us. So me and my twin sister were adopted together. My year older brother than me was adopted and the older lot lived with my grandma. Um, the way I think I see myself is like, I would like to think I've done well, but sometimes I feel like I've gone down, but and I think everyone just thinks I'm a care kid, so. When I was in school, like, I always kept it to myself, so I didn't get picked on. But when some people found out, they always took the piss out of it a little bit. So it was like, I don't want to come into school, just stay at home, try and keep off school as much as I can. For, I keep in contact with my biological brothers and sisters, but not my mum really. My grandma's disowned me, so not really. Katie and Jennifer were both adopted within two months of their birth. I was born in July and adopted in August, so yeah, about four to five weeks old. I was adopted at three months. Um, I was born in May and adopted at the beginning of August. I went to a foster family before, for three months while everything was getting sorted. So I was born in May and then adopted in August. Katie and Jennifer are very close despite not being blood related. People mistake us for being blood people related. People are so the whole shocked time. when we say we're not. I know. So if we say we're adopted, people think we're still, like me and you are blood related. Still, yeah, so that like we're adopted from the same biological parents. But then also people think we look exactly like mum and dad as well. Yeah. Everyone's people shocked to think that shocked. we're not blood. Georgia was adopted with her brother, who was three when placed into care. Um, I was placed into care for a year with my brother um, when I was seven. So we met our parents, our adoptive parents, when we were eight and then moved in a year later. Um, I remember being put into care um, because I was seven and I remember that there was a riot van that turned up and there were about, I think, I remember there being like, 12 to 15 different policemen turn up. Um, both of my biological parents disappeared. My mum hid and my dad ran away and left me and my brother in the house. Um, and then we were taken by social services that day. Georgia and her brother had been neglected by their biological parents. My brother and I had moved around a hundred different houses I don't think my parents had owned a house or paid rent on the house. Um, they were both drug addicts, class A drugs, um, not financially ready to have children, had children really young. Um, everything pretty much was not the right way to have children and it was the best decision I think of my life and even my brothers that we would play somewhere else because I think if we were still in that position God knows where we would be now. I think when I first went into care, it really hit me hard. Um, because obviously 
a riot van turned up and we lived in a council estate so people that I went to school with all lived on that estate so when it happened it wasn't private news it was broadcast amongst everyone. Um, the circumstances of my adoption it was um, 1961 what I know about my birth mother was that she was 16 and um, she had um, she had become very attached to a merchant seaman who was visiting her town in the north of England. Um, she, she was in the A stream at school, she had brown curly hair and she came from a very, very strict Methodist family and so that just wasn't allowed. So she went to a home for wayward, wayward girls where she, um, where she had me and stayed with me until I was adopted at the age of six weeks. I think basically my mum had quite a not trouble but quite difficult maybe lifestyle and life her mum was separated from her dad I know there was some problems in the family I don't think she spoke to her siblings she had a boyfriend um, but she also was with someone else at the same time so I think there was a bit of confusion over who was the father um, and she didn't actually tell either one of them that she was pregnant. For me her parents were really Catholic and of didn't approve of she was just with a boyfriend and she didn't actually tell her parents she didn't tell anyone apart from like her one best friend about being pregnant um so she kind of hit it and she kind of just put it to the back of her head carried on with her life as in as if nothing was different and then Neither can remember yeah got to the point of family. giving birth and was like well this needs to happen now and she just kind of didn't want basically was in denial about it because her, even to the point where she went on the Big Dipper. She went on the Big Dipper roller coaster at nine months pregnant. <laughs> she was like, "I'm just gonna, it's it's fine, nothing's happening." Complete but, denial. Yeah, so I think she was just like, for the best, just yeah. In terms of impact on me, I mean, I guess when I first found out that maybe she didn't tell the fathers, I was a bit like, "Oh," because you kind of always think that they'll sort of be thinking about you. And what yeah, saying my biological father didn't know yeah. about me, so they're just kind of living their life, not even knowing. Yeah, not even knowing. So that was like a bit strange because yeah. you kind of think when you watch programs and everything, they're thinking about, oh, I wonder what they're yeah. up to, and all this stuff. But kind of got over that. Yeah, you know, it was. I just don't really think about thought. it. Yeah, in everyday life. Yeah. So. Katie and Jennifer do not have contact with their biological but I know their families. Did write once a year, I think, to our biological mums and sent photos like an update, um, just to keep them in yeah. the loop. But we've had no like, like direct contact. Yeah. Yeah. The relationship, I feel, was really naturally built, probably because we were both adopted when we were babies. babies. So, we've, so known, we've known no different. Yeah, I've never known anything else, neither has Katie. No. Mum and Dad have had us since we were this small. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was just completely natural. Like We, we were don't know like born it, life before yeah. it, because we were it was like straight away. Mm. So... It's just kind of been just like what we've always what known. We've known. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. haven't ever felt unwanted, unwanted or unappreciated at all. I think, if anything, the complete opposite. Yeah. I think I know how extra loved that we are yeah. because we were wanted so, so much. Wanted. I know that's so cringy. Cliche. Okay? <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I've never once felt it's the complete it's opposite. It's like against us in any way, like yeah. being unwanted or. It's completely opposite. We feel extremely wanted, I'd yeah. say. Both of our lives would have been completely different. Yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like I don't think I would have had the opportunities that I have had yeah. now. I'm not sure if I would have gone to uni. Um, I think I remember being told that she lived in a pub or something. So I, I can just imagine the whole lifestyle growing up in a pub and everything would have been very different. And... I think because both of their lives were quite unstable. There yeah. wasn't like that. It was all like unplanned and just yeah, unstable. There, it mm. just wouldn't have been as structured as what it, yeah. it has been here. Mm. Um, I feel like adoption has enhanced my view of family massively in the way that it just makes you realise how important the family unit is and the fact that you have these four people or five or six or seven yeah. people if you count your extended family who care about you every single second of every day what you're doing nothing is too insignificant to raise i think 
my family are some of my best friends yeah and so it's just made me think that that's what I want with then with my kids that I want to be their best friend and just be able to have those family dinners have those family outings get excited about yeah. spending time together I guess what I've learned from my experience is that you can be adopted into a really loving family and and it can work out incredibly well um I think that knowing what I've come from has pushed me further because I want to do better and I don't want to be that person that was given the opportunity and didn't take it. May not have been the best upbringing for a child, that's not the way a child should start their life but I've learned from it, I know how to, I know how I want my family to be in the future. My parents have shown me what a healthy family is so I think I've got a really good foundation to build my own family on now. Because I know what it's like to live in a bad environment where your clothes aren't in wardrobes, they're in bin bags, all of your photos are in bin bags, you've got ants coming through the doors, the food's like not in the fridge. You, I pretty much brought up my brother, so I know, ex I don't know exactly what I want from the future, but I know that it's not that. Despite their efforts, Harry and his sister were placed into 12 different foster homes throughout their time in care. I'd like to think it give me a, given me a head start, but sometimes it's a downfall, but who knows. So yeah, it was my experience with care. I felt unwanted because they always wanted my sister, not me. I was an add-on. They wanted to, they just took me to, because they didn't want to split my sister up. They've definitely given me more, me more opportunities in life, because I've got, I can go on holiday now, I can go out places I've got a flat in Tenerife so <laughs> I feel like they've encouraged me a lot so made sure I've tried to go down the right path so went to college got my diploma just got a job made sure I was always had money always kept me on my feet but that's about it I think if I wasn't adopted, my life would have just gone down a completely different route. I'd be getting arrested all the time and stuff like that. I feel like it set me back because if I wasn't adopted, I could have probably got better GCSEs than I did, probably made more friends, probably not the mean, like the harshest person I am now towards people. So if I was if I wasn't adopted, I'd, help, I'd probably be less rude than I am now. I've learned never to do drugs or anything like that, so never go down the road my mum did. So, just, so now she's done that, I know the path not to take. My, my outlook of life is, I think one day I might adopt just to take a kid out of care and give them a life they deserve to than them seeing them suffer in care and just think why did no one want me.